I mean, I love my dad. He was a provider. He was, he was a protector. He drank a bit, and he would do some odd things when he would go out drinking and stuff. He came home drunk one day and just sat us all down and pulled out a gun and said, don't move. He fired shots. One, two, three, four. Across our head. I mean, like, into the wall as we're sitting on our beds. It was scary. But uh, soon it was over. He walked out, and we just went back to what we were doing. Like, it didn't happen. Now, people say, were you scared? I wasn't scared. I know my dad. You know, my dad would, he would not hurt us in that fashion at all. Um, but he had a way of trying to teach lessons to us. And that was one he tried. I still don't understand to this day what he was trying to say with that. But that was Joe Davis. You know, that was the way he operated. When Terrell was 15, his father became gravely ill from lupus. I just remember walking down the hallway. And with my brother and my mom, I came out. And she just said, you know, what she told us that my dad had died. And I just couldn't believe my dad was lying there, man, just, just lifeless. I stared at him just crying, just hoping that he would move and just hope that, hey, maybe, you know, maybe he's just, just out for a, little, for a little bit and, and maybe he'll come back. And then he just never, he just never woke up. And here it is, the man that, that, that taught us so much about life, man. And you know, everything was about being strong with him. You know, he prepared us for everything. I was like, that was, that was a pillar of my life, man. That was my dad. After my dad died, it almost felt for a minute like, you know, like, why am I, why am I even here? Just flunking out of school. I mean, I just not going to classes. <sighs> just, just, I got off track. You know, it just life just just didn't have the same meaning. And he told me that he had he had quit football. He he, he wasn't going to play anymore. His, his dad had died, and he felt so disconnected with everything. Terrell started hanging out on the streets. One night. He found himself staring down a double barrel shotgun. That was the most pivotal moment in my life. I mean, after that day, I made a decision in my life. And I was like, you know what? I got to get back to playing sports. I got a call directly from a guy named Bob Pittard. And it was on my voicemail. He said that he was, this, he was a scout from the University of Georgia. The University of Georgia? Why are they calling for me? I told him we couldn't offer him a scholarship. But if he would come and bring film with him and we liked the film, then we would let him know while he was on his trip if we could offer him a scholarship. So he came to visit and brought the film. I asked Wayne McDuffie, our offensive coordinator, to look at it. And he walked back in about 15 minutes later and said, sign him. People bounce off of him. He's really hard to tackle. The San Diego kid signed with Georgia, a school with a great running back tradition with Herschel Walker, Rodney Hampton, and when Davis arrived, Garrison Hurst. Terrell was a tough-minded, when he ran the ball, when he played the game, Terrell's a mean guy back there. One of the things, uh, and it still stands out today again with me, is his physical toughness. I'm a guy that I would describe as sort of a chain mover. I wasn't hitting balls out of the park. All these great running backs that came through, and they expect the running backs to be good when they come to Georgia. I got, you know, a good insight here, so let's take a chance on this guy late in the drive. In the sixth round, with pick number 196, that's what the Broncos did. Chance, could you get it done as an individual? I believe I could. Hey, I can be that guy. No doubt in my mind, I'll be the feature back. I'd like to find a feature back. Hopefully we can find that one guy. Here. Davis did not play in the Broncos' first preseason game. Their second was in Tokyo. It is hot in Tokyo. It's humid. I'm tired. All these backs are in front of you. I'm not going to make the team anyway. So screw it. And I remember going back and I called down to the desk. 
I was asking about some flights out of there. I believe if someone could have spoke English, he would have been in the next one. I don't think I'm going to play in this game. Start eating hot dogs, start eating food, and the special teams coach comes over and says, hey, we're going to put you in. And <laughs> what? And I'm thinking I'm about to make a tackle. All of a sudden. Absolutely crushed by rookie Terrell Davis. You look at me, I'm number 19, and I'm in the background celebrating like I hit this guy. Like, who is that? And they're like, that's TD, that's, that's the running back. I said, running back? And so from that moment, I think he showed Mike, I'm tough. You're looking at a six-round draft pick that nobody really knew a whole lot about. And Mike said, what do you think about being our starting running back? <laughs> I said, what? You watch him, and all of a sudden, he goes from rushing 80 yards, 90 yards, 120, 130, and you're like, oh, wait, wait a minute, this dude is legit, this dude can play. Oh my God, we, we got to steal. Report from the bench is blurred vision. He has a history of migraine we're headaches, and we're told it's questionable whether he'll be back. Elway, handoff, Davis, into the end zone, touchdown! Yeah. Davis takes the toss and runs right, cuts back. TD right now, making a lot of Packers miss. I get kicked. Terrell Davis is on both knees. Here, this would be bad. And I'm thinking, I just can't believe what's happening. That scared the hell out of me because he was on a roll at that point in time. What we're, I, I don't think we could have won the football game without him. He's going to run hard on him. He's scared. They're out the game. they take him out. They're going to take Davis out. By the time we went back out, I could see. But I could see an HD. That's a sign of a champ. <laughs> back in the game. It is a rocket standing up. Denver's going to win it. Oh, baby, they're going to win this thing. The Broncos have done it. They have shocked everybody. Go ahead and salute them, Denver. You got the world champion. The Broncos and Terrell Davis began the 1998 season on a record-breaking pace. And Terrell Davis, the last two times he's touched the football, has gone 63 and 59 yards, both for touchdowns. I mean, some games we were up 40 to 6 at the half. And we didn't need TD anymore. Legitimately, he could have brought 25 yards this season. Here goes Terrell Davis, big hole. TD's gone. He stayed 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. You're out. You're out. After 14 games, Davis was less than 200 yards away from 2,000. What a run by Terrell Davis! How many tackles did he break on that baby? So we go play Miami. I got hit a lot that day. They passed the stat sheet. They look at it. I see 29 yards. I said, mm. and I remember sitting next to Derek LaBelle. He said, man, you could have got 2,000 yards this season. And I was thinking, yeah, I was like, that's, that's gone now. The 13-2 and two Broncos entered their final regular season game with nothing to play for. We didn't want to get Trell hurt, but we wanted to get him that, get him 2,000 yards. It wasn't his record anymore. It was our record. <laughs> it was really about us as far as the team. Now, we'll lie and tell you it's not important. We've got to get into the playoffs, get their help. But you better believe it was important because when you think about the fullbacks, you think about the offensive lines, there are no stats out there. But to be able to say that you blocked for a 2,000-yard back, not many people can say that. There was a point where Mike said, hey, I'll give him three more carries. But I know Mike. He was just motivating the guys up front. We knew every step of the way how close he was. We were yelling at the sideline, how many does he need, you know? 40, okay, we're on it. Because we're getting a record. Because remember, hey, they're going to talk about us too. The guy's like, hey, come on, hey, hey, Bobby, make sure, you know, let's go, let's get this. Hey, Sharp, you used to always ask. You, you, got, you got that corner set off on that night? Sharp, what, look, what it's looking like backside. Now I'm telling you about it, TD. It's not good back here today. Keep it front side. But that day, I like TD, I got something for you today. 
needs about 22 yards. He'll take the handoff again, skips back, big hole. TD running like on a six man. And I remember being back there where we know it's one run away. He needs seven yards in his second and six. At the 48, he's got to get to the 41. It's right here. This is our opportunity. The great ones can make it happen. I don't care how tired he is or how hurt he is. He's getting 2,000 yards whether he wants it or not. Behind Elway by himself, he takes the hand off running left. Terrell breaks the tackle. He's got it. There he is. There would have been mutiny on the sideline. I remember just getting sworn by the team. Remember looking at the scoreboard, I could see it flashing. 2000, and they're chanting TD, TD. The Broncos were again Super Bowl bound. Going into that whole week, Landon was talking about the fact that, you know, Terrell Davis is not going to beat us. If I was on their side too, I'd make sure I stopped Terrell Davis. Davis surpassed 100 yards rushing for a record seventh consecutive playoff game. But he was most effective as a decoy. Elway had over 300 yards passing, and in the final game of his career, was named Super Bowl MVP. Even though Terrell uh, wasn't the MVP, he probably should have been, everything was done to stop him. That Don Elway, and that TD, that combination, lethal, absolutely lethal.